Previously on the Fantastic Worlds podcast. According to the legends, if a hut dances around and refuses to let you in through its tiny door, you must stand in front of it and loudly call out, Hut, oh hut, turn your back to the woods and your front to me. We're going to be playing Reign of Winter. Um, We really hope you enjoy it. I'm Abby, and I'm playing Pippa Loxley. I am indeed Angel. I will be playing Abraxas Hill Runner. My name is Kaylee. I am playing Odessa Granade. When you arrive at the Plot and Hook Tavern, you find that you may need to act sooner than planned. He told the village council that the noblewoman's escort came under attack by bandits and strange wintry creatures near the edge of the border wood. It's like, I've got a beer, I've got things that explode, I've got this really hot chick. It's a massacre. Bodies everywhere. The stench of death. They got, uh, it looks like, yeah, they got taken down pretty hard. I'm gonna pop that sucker open. And when you open it, two ropes all of a sudden break loose and buried underneath the snow and it snaps forward and a giant logs come swinging down towards you. Hello, Dustin the Dungeon Master here. First off, I want to thank everybody, a heartfelt thank you for listening to episode one of the Fantastic Worlds podcast. Technically, it's our second episode because we did have an episode zero, but you know, who's counting? The Fantastic Worlds podcast kind of has been something I started thinking about really heavily in January, and um, I wrote out a very long worded plan about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to see it. And then I went to my friends and surprisingly, and maybe a little crazily, they all agreed with me. I'm pretty sure every single one of them regrets that decision at this point. Uh, But nonetheless, it has given me something to look forward to and to focus, focus on. And here we go, nine months later, or almost nine months later, oddly enough, the gestation of giving birth, we have our first couple of episodes released. Um, I think our characters are pretty unique, uh, and I really love every single one of them, from uh, Pippa's southern accent to Abraxas's dogged determination, I guess we should say, and Odessa's need to hit on everything that moves. Um, they, all, they all provide some great, great personalities. I think one want to talk a little bit, too, about what makes this, you know, what makes us different. I, I want to really focus on the fact that this is about fun first and math second. And I just looked at my notes and I wrote math first, fun second. Definitely not that way. Uh, it is fun first, math second. And I really want to emphasize with this podcast the rule of fun. We are going to follow the rules and I believe in the roll of the dice. But honestly, we need to have some fun. And Pathfinder is not an easy thing to learn. Last episode, I said I played Pathfinder for 27 years, which is obviously not true since Pathfinder has only been around for about a decade. I have been tabletop gaming for 27 years. But I really hope that in understanding of that effort that, you know, we are going to make mistakes like that. We're not going to get, you know, hundreds of messages. I think we know when we make mistakes. um, And we definitely love good feedback. But, you know, just try to keep it light. One of the things that I've seen turn off a lot of new Pathfinder players is people really harshing on making mistakes or making somebody feel smaller than themselves. And I, and I really did not want that environment when, when we started this game. I wanted everybody to feel like this was a place they could learn and they can grow. And I don't always succeed at that. I think sometimes I make mistakes that make our players not feel the best, but I try. I try to step back. I try to educate and try to be the best. So I think they are all having fun. I am having fun, and I hope you all enjoy our show. So it is without further ado, I present to you episode two. Cold may cause shrinkage. The sounds of clinking glasses, rustling gowns, and harp music filled the formal parlor of the Count of Liddell, and Pippa Loxley was in her element. Smoothing down imaginary wrinkles in her green silk skirts, Pippa peered demurely through her lashes up at the young Baron Delancey, a simpering youth only recently come into his titles and former induction into the peerage. 
The young lord had inherited great wealth, she had been told, in addition to his family's traditional lands. She had also heard that he had overhunted those lands, overtaxed his people, and was in general just a little prick. You are too kind, my lord. Tis true my people suffer greatly as we search for our lost homeland, Prittian. Many of them are even now held in bondage in Cheliax. Pippa cast her eyes down as if overcome and dabbed delicately at the corner of her eye with a silk handkerchief before looking back up at the Baron with a small, brave smile. But you're right. We can't give up hope. The kindness we've been shown here in Taldor by Grand Duke Broyce and yourself, of course, will give us the strength and resources we need to free our people and reclaim our land. Name dropping the Duke, Baron Delancey's liege, lord and ruler of the Avon Prefecture, where his barony was placed, proved every a bit as effective as Pippa had calculated. Princess! cried the young lord, holding his hand to his chest and putting on his most chivalrous airs. It is our honor to assist you. Please take this token as a gesture of good faith and a pledge to aid your noble people in any way that I can. He removed a large ruby ring from his finger and, leaning down, pressed it into Pippa's small palm. Good sir, I could possibly take such a precious thing. We are a proud people. They would never forgive me for accepting charity. True to form with nobles who wished to make a grand show of their great wealth and even greater generosity, he ignored her and insisted she take it, saying it was nothing compared to the struggles of her people and but a pittance from the treasure room of his estates. Pippa graciously accepted after only a few more token protestations, making a mental note to pay his treasury a visit at a later date. Spotting a familiar mop of brown hair across the room, she thanked the Baron with all of the dignity of her feigned station and claimed she needed to confer with her aides, before making her way to where Abraxas was leaning uncomfortably against the wall near the refreshment table. How's it coming? He blinked his large golden eyes down at her. Uh, fine. I think some of the serving women from the village told me a few things the people here need that this count isn't providing. She smiled brightly at her new friend. Well, that's what we're here for, to help him redistribute some of his resources. Say, have you seen Odessa? I lost track of her after we came in. Abraxas grinned wolfishly. I, I last saw her heading upstairs with one of the noble ladies. She said, um, not to wait up. <laughs> not to wait up. They haven't even rung the dinner bell yet. Still, I suppose she can have her conquest while we make ours. The steward rang the bell, summoning the Count's guest to dinner. Pippa turned to Abraxas, who bowed gallantly in a way she and Adusa had been coaching him, extending his hand down to her in a manner one did when escorting a half leading companion to dinner. Shall we? Yes. Let's get to work. I think we all ended the last episode on a little bit of a high note. Don't you, Abby? Oh, yeah. Real high. (laughs) Real high up in the trees. Real high up in the trees where Pippa did not see the incredibly obvious trap. What would I have had to have rolled to have seen him? Uh, 20. Wow. Wow. So you're close. I picked Rogue specifically for trap finding, and she can't even do that. It's all in the dice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, what was the damage, Dustin? Well, as you all noted, Pippa is in a little bit of a bind. I imagine if this was a TV show, it would all be in slow motion. Abraxas is looking (laughs) for an ambush, looking through the trees, preparing to be attacked. Odessa has an uneasy feeling in her stomach while Jim is jumping for joy to find out what is in the chest. And Pippa, confident that the chest is free of traps, slowly opens up the box only to hear the snap of two ropes breaking off, sliding underneath the snow and up the trees, releasing two logs to get endured by Ewok bandits. Fucking Ewoks. Are they really Ewoks? No, they are not Ewoks. <laughs> or like Pathfinder analogs for Ewoks? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Right, that's such a bummer. <laughs> Abraxas, since you had such a high perception, I think you had a 23 last episode, roll me a percentage die. If you get above 50%, you will pull Pippa out of the way before the trap hits oh. her. Come on, rainbow dice. Roll well, roll well. Do this. <laughs> 86. As you open the box, 
Abraxas is looking around and he's like, what is that rope climbing up that tree? And he's like, holy shit. And he leaps forward and turns around and glides down out of the way just nice. as the log slams into the treasure chest, yeah. exploding it. You have avoided the trap. Still in slow-mo, Pippa's like, what the fuck? <laughs> So when the chest erupts, does anything good come out? Yeah, is there like some raining gold? <laughs> when you look at the chest, it appears to be completely empty. That's bullshit. Much <laughs> bullshit. However, you gotta let me finish. It appears that the bandits decided to bury the treasure underneath the treasure chest, hoping that if you opened it, it would spring the trap. Underneath the treasury chest, you find a cache that contains the majority of weapons and armor stripped from Lady Argentea's guards. Oh. oh, there we go. Including five sets of leather armor, three sets of studded leather armor, a small masterwork chain vest, two light wooden shields, seven long swords, two spears, a masterwork dagger, and three light crossbows with a total of 25 bolts. You have cleared out this area. Pippa's going to be very suspiciously scanning the tree line now that a trap sprung. And can I roll a perception check to see if I notice any signs of like bandits? Yes, go ahead. 10. You do not see any bandits, but Abraxas with his 23 definitely did not see any bandits as well. So you all are all good. Okay, well, then we're fine. So there is a trail up in front of you. Do you guys wish to proceed down it? Yeah, let's do it. You continue down the trail left by the bandits. The snow becomes increasingly deep in this part of the forest. A soft cascade of snow falls from the overhead branch, hissing softly as it strikes the ground. Why don't you all roll me a perception check? 25. Is it 23 for Pippa? 18. Do I smell anything? Bandits, fairies... Does it smell fall under perception? Yes, but anything within 30 feet, I can recognize smells. Abraxas, you start to pick up on something. <gasps> snossages? <laughs> Not snossages. It's never snossages. What order are you walking down the trail in? I'm thinking probably Pippa first, since she's going to be checking for traps. Mm-hmm. More of them. And Abraxas, like, really close by. And Odessa and Jim are probably just haphazardly following behind. You're smelling like a really bad breath. That's what it smells like to you. And it, it's not a Dessa or Pippa or Jim. So you don't know where it is. You're just picking up a bad breath. There's a foul stench in the air. Just as you do that, a giant worm creature jumps out of the snow and attacks Pippa. Roll for initiative. Giant size? Like mechanics giant size? No, it's medium size, but oh. it looks like a dragon. All right, that is 19 for me. Pippa got a 9. 11. When it rolls low for a couple times, then it's all high in 20s. And I'm going to allow Braxis a surprise round as well, because he knew something was coming. He just didn't know where it was coming from. Pippa, the worm has moved towards you, and it goes to grapple you. So roll me your CMD. 28. So you are now grappled. It's going to try to bite you. Oh, it rolls a one. Yay. Uh Angel, call me a critical fail card. Tripped. You are knocked prone. Perfect. (laughs) Does it just go timber like... Does it lose its grapple? The Arctic Tazzled Worm starts to wrap around you to bite. It somehow gets caught on your outfit and busts loose. It just flings itself forward and falls prone. It is now a Braxis' turn. I feel like Odessa has more respect for your clothing now and watching like a wardrobe malfunction prone a creature. Just like, oh, all right. And that's why you add lace. (laughs) Braxis is going to use a word of power. He's going to stare at the worm and go cantor. And that's a verbal spell. I'm casting flare. So I'm going to create a burst of light. And that's a fortitude, DC 12 for the worm. It rolls a 21. Uh, then we'll move action. I'm going to take out, he's going to take out his scimitar. Okay, and now we start over. Odessa, you're up. So I'm going to take that five foot step to the left, and I'm going to shoot at it with my fancy gun. 16 to hit. That is a hit. Ho-ho! 
Ooh, max damage. That is 10. Nice. Kill it. Kill it. It does not take a fatal blow, but it does take a significant a bit of damage. You shoot it in the side for what of a side is. It's a giant snaky dragon worm thing. You hit it in a pretty vital area. The dragon begins to get up pretty furious at the fact that it got so easily owned by garments. <laughs> in doing so, he opens himself up to an attack of opportunity. So Pippa, roll me an attack. Pippa yanks her cold iron dagger out of her belt and rolls an eight to hit. Okay. Uh, and you completely miss this prone creature lying on the ground or what kind of line? Yanks it out of her belt, just swings wildly because she's so freaked out. <laughs> he goes to bite you. Natural one again. Does a 23 hit you? Oh yeah. 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 That definitely hits me. <laughs> It's a 23 hit. You take nine points of damage. Roll me a fortitude. Doesn't sound great. 13. You passed. Ooh. He goes Ooh. to breathe on you, and you just cough at the foul stench of his oh. breath. Yeah, the thing has halitosis. That was what I was smelling. Halitosis. Braxis, you're up. I'm going to move in and swing down with the scimitar. I'm going to aim for the bullet wound. 15. A 15 hits. Yes. Exactly. Oh, my rainbow dice. All right. Damage. Six total. He looks pretty hurt at this point. Yeah, he does. And with that, Pippa, you're up. So Pippa's going to go for him with her dagger again. And that was an 11. And you missed. (laughs) And I missed again. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Uh, Dessa, you're up. Finish him. I am going to try to shoot him again, see if I can't hit him in his other stupid side. That is 18 against touch. That is a hit. Get wrecked, you scaly bitch. That is a nine. You shoot him right between the eyes and he just drops. Yes. 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 (gasps) You have vanquished the Arctic Tazzle Worm. You just look back and Odessa has Jim on her shoulder and he like looks at her and they just like fist bump. Nice. Yeah, well, you know, he's really ruining my day, so. Pippa, I can skin him. You can make him into shoes. Is that something you're into? No? I don't know. (laughs) Is he a pretty color? (laughs) He is white. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yes, you should definitely skin him. In the meantime, I've got this giant bite wound. It's kind of making my vision white out. Let Let me take care of that for you. Ooh, max with a one. That's nine. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you so much. As Odessa skins the worm, inside you find sacks of poison. Ooh. They're like glands? Yeah. Nice. Careful with those. I can definitely make use of these. I don't know if anybody else. Girl, they are all yours. I all right. I don't need balls in my life. That's all right, honey. I'll do all the ball wrangling for us. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but a bunch. Poison balls. I like that they're going into the inventory like that. That's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How, how's that wound, Pippa? Oh, it's much better. I'm, I'm feeling 100% again. Oh, fantastic. Thank, thank you so much. Odessa's just kind of like eyeing you from afar. I want to help, but I don't know what to do. So I'm going to stay back here. Jim, isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh. As the echoes of your gun bullets and the noise of battle has uh, subsided, it is very beautiful. As much as you hate snow, I think Odessa would admire the beauty of the scenery. If it wasn't for the fact that you guys might be murdered at any second, you might be able to enjoy this as a, a nice little vacation. You continue down the path, and the density of the trees are slowly increasing as you proceed through them. You see feathered bundles and strange fetishes hang from the lowest branches of the trees in this part of the forest. Swaying and shifting in the wind, all are stuck through with small pins holding pieces of leather bound around them. I want to investigate. That's creepifying. Well, that's creepy. Okay. Does it look pretty or does it look like Christmas decorations? Yeah, like, (laughs) do we looking at Christmas at the Adams family or are we looking at some serial killer basement has a tree? Roll perception. (laughs) 18. Oh, 19. Uh, 24. The feathered fetishes are actually the frozen corpses of dead crows pierced with tiny arrows. Oh, that's not cool. You know how much I love crows. How small are these arrows? 
The word that comes to mind is diminutive. Oh, they're fucking tiny. Oh, it's winter-touched fey. What's their beef with crows? Roll me a knowledge nature. Right. 25. Yeah, you definitely know that this is some diminutive fey, and whoever is doing it must be fucking evil, because, I mean, who else would go and kill a bunch of crows? As you guys are walking through, Abraxas does a 15 hit you. It exactly hits me. Roll me a fortitude. Easy peasy. Yeah, 18 without anything added to it. Kaylee does a 18 hit. Yes. Roll me a fortitude. 13. You are good. Pippa, go ahead and does... Oh, this is a critical threat. Oh, yay. (gasps) Oh, great. No. Does an 18 hit? Mm Mm-hmm. You take four points of damage. Well, I guess that's not as bad as last time. And roll me a fortitude save. (laughs) Okay. Don't say it until you'd rolled that fortitude save, man. Okay, that's a 12. You are fine. Yes, uh, thank God. Roll me initiative. 13. 3. 20. Pippa, roll me a perception check. 21. You see a lithe, diminutive creature. It looks like a humanoid with a wispy, moth-like wings and long, thin ears. It looks like a little fairy. It has long green hair. Well, long for its size. To you, it'd be like a clipping of your hair. You can't really see its eyes from that distance, but it glows like a fairy that you've heard in tales of back in the day. It's pretty much a stereotype in the back of your head, what you've always pictured a fairy to look like. Tinkerbell? Basically a little Tinkerbell. A little blue green haired Tinkerbell? The difference is this one's trying to kill you. Son of a gun. So it's less cute. Fairies. Pippa's gonna yell and point at it and be like, guys, over there! And swing her crossbow around. Aim and shoot. Natty, 20. Hell yes! yes. Roll me a confirmation. Please, oh, oh. please, oh, please. Three! <laughs> it's super does not confirm, but I get max damage, right? You do get max damage, so... So with, six. So you have seriously hurt one of them. Abraxas does a 19 hit. Yes, it does. I'm level one, remember. Roll me a fortitude save. My best save. 16. You are good. Oh, Oh, a critical fail. Crit fail. Short bow piercing, right? Yep. Pinched in parts. You take 1d6 points of damage. You hear a ow! Really tiny sounding like kind of voice. And (laughs) that's karma. I say that in (laughs) Sylvan, the language of the fairies. And you hear, you you son of a bitch, in the background. (laughs) (laughs) You watch your mouth. (laughs) Odessa, you're up. I can see this tiny little douchebag up there. The only person who can see it right now is Pippa. You do know that you were getting shot from something on the right side. And if you roll me a perception check, you might be able to see it. That is a 22. Okay, all of a sudden in front of you. Dead bitch. Okay, I am going to shoot at her, and Jim is just mad. He's just sitting on my shoulders like, ah, like, somebody shot at us! Ah, ah, kill it! <laughs> Jim is upset, <laughs> he's in the cold, shit is being shot at him. He's not a happy it's dude. It's all bad. He's not happy. Okay, <laughs> that is a... 18. You hit. Roll me damage. That is 12 points of damage. Holy shit. You blast it, and it just explodes. Like murder <laughs> stick strikes <Yes>. again. <laughs> Ew, nice. <laughs> it is actually the one near Abby. Roll me a perception, Abigail. Eleven. He disappears. Oh, crap. Where are these little bastards coming from? And <laughs> I can't believe this. I rolled another one. Yes. I, you should use that dice all the time. Pull me a card there. Th- same thing. It's a piercing sh- or a short bow. Bullseye. <gasps> Your shot ricochets and hits you near the eye. You are blinded for one round. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's amazing. Perfect. <laughs> See, look at I'm that. so excited. And next it is Abraxas. You're up. Oh, I'm up. All right. Well, I will look around since I don't even see where they're at. Oh, yes. 21. 21. And with that 21, 
you see that one that disappeared for Pippa has shown Becca. I will uh, take out my wand of burning gaze. And yes, I'm so glad yes. we splashed on that thing. Uh, Me too. <laughs> activate it. It takes a standard action to use it, so I have to wait one more round. Pippa, you're up. Pippa is gonna reload her crossbow and scan the scan the tree line to see if she can pick it back up. Give me a perception. That's a twenty-one. You see the fairy now. All right, you little bitch. <laughs> You're a little bitch. Natural twenty. Oh, Jesus! Oh my yes. god! Roll the confirm. Okay. Kill it. Oh my god! Oh, geez, it's, it's an eight. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I can't roll to confirm. The queen of rolling but- crits. And can't confirm them. <laughs> I can never confirm my crits. <laughs> Max damage. It's one uh, one d six. As you let an arrow fly loose, it goes through the body and sticks into the tree behind it, and it just hangs there, lifeless. Anybody want a shish kebab? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? No. no. Throw another fay on the Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Put another fay on the Barbie. <laughs> Braxis is thinking about it. Ah, uh, naturally. All of a sudden. You see this creature barreling towards you, uh, Pippa, because you're right there in the front, and you get blasted with a ton of color. Roll me a Will DC 15. That sounds like color mm-hmm. spray. That's a Yay, spell. that sounds fun. Uh, that would be an eight. <laughs> oh my god, happy. <laughs> Disco lights in your face. A vivid cone of clashing colors springs forth from the hand, causing Pippa to become stunned, blinded, and unconscious for... What the fuck? Just in time for pride. (laughs) Just in time for pride. I am stunned and unconscious by the rainbow. Just as one is at pride after drinking large amounts of alcohol. (laughs) Stunned and unconscious. You are stunned for five rounds and unconscious for five rounds. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Odessa, you're up. So I am going to get as close to her as I can. I'm assuming I see her drop, right? Yes. Okay. You you actually see the fairy now because it did not hide. It it was pissed off. It went straight for a run. I'm going to shoot her because now I'm pissed. Okay. 17. That's a hit. Shit. Yeah, it is. Fuck this bitch. Yeah. That is a 10. You explode the second fay of the day. It just, uh, and the blood oh, splatters really? everywhere, and there's like this kind of starburst blood splat on the snow. And you <laughs> have killed the fays. Does Pippa wake up? You are out of the combat, and Pippa is there unconscious. So Odessa is going to run up to her and pick her up out of the snow, because that shit's cold, and that is how you get hypothermia. (laughs) And you know she's wearing some lacy fucking garbage that isn't going to keep her warm enough in the snow. So Odessa's just going to piggyback her around (laughs) until she wakes the fuck up. (laughs) Abraxas can help too if he should choose to. Pippa, you wake up to a teddy bear wrapped around your neck. You're riding on Odessa's back. Y'all, I gotta say, so far this adventure sucks. But this is nice. (laughs) (laughs) Pippa's just like still asleep, lightly snoring. (laughs) Pretending so that she can just continue to be carried. Keep riding. (laughs) Odessa's just gonna keep carrying you for a minute because now she's worried about you. And she's just gonna be like, it's fine. I can carry you a little bit longer. Jim needs company. This is fine. Just... Rest a minute, okay? Much appreciated. A giant worm thing bit me, and then I got a color explosion, and I just... I just can't right now. It's fine. Just stay down for a minute. You're freaking me out. (laughs) I've got halfling levels of can't even right now. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't that be half the level of can't even? Well, I mean, but they're very small. The can't evens are just... They fill them up so much faster. Perfect. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. I know now Brexus is tempted to try one just to see. What We're walking ahead of you, buddy. If you want to pick one up and take a bite, like, nobody didn't know. <laughs> we wouldn't see. <laughs> well, there's literally one that's whole, and it's actually on a nifty little pick, so you can cook it later. Yeah. I... Oh, cook? Uh, Brexus only cooks his oh, food yeah. in, like, you know, around. <laughs> She's all nice and skewered like a kebab for you. Really? So. I mean, it, <laughs> you're <laughs> you Meat on the stick is the best kind of meat. It's really true. I mean, I don't even eat meat, and I like it's shit natural. on a stick. It's why, great. why let it go to waste? <laughs> Stuff on a stick is the best thing. Uh-huh. Abraxas, you gonna try it? Now I'm like, <laughs> I really am invested in you eating this one. <laughs> he has to consider where he's like, 
Uh, well, maybe a little bite, like, little on the nipple. Foot. It's just so wolf that it's so fun. Huff puff, this is Huff delicious. Puff. Actually, Kaylee, what were you saying you guys are going to do? We're going to keep going through the terrible forest of terrible, where it's cold and terrible. Should we track these things back to their source? I think we should just light this entire area on fire and start from scratch, because this place is obviously just a shithole of ice and fucked up little creatures. Now, Odessa, only you can prevent a forest fire. (laughs) I don't want to prevent it. I want to start it. Oh, there might be still half a chance Argentea is still alive. Otherwise, I'd be right there with you. You don't don't want to burn down, like, bunnies and things like that. Bunnies are delicious, especially roasted. Burning down all the bunnies in this area prevents more of this shit from happening. Fuck bunnies. Just saying. They procreate quickly. The populace will respawn. (laughs) Hate this place. (laughs) Nature will find a way. (laughs) I can try to track them back to their source. The source happens to be the trail you guys have been following this entire time, so... (laughs) Oh, fantastic. That away. That away. If we must. I pick up one of the shish kebab fairies and put it in my pack. You never know. What if we get hungry later? They're edible, right? Me. Best to pack a snack. <laughs> Odessa just kind of eyes you like, mm-hmm. I hate them, but I don't think I can s- deep down a cannibalism just yet. I don't know. Come back to me in like a week. I'm not a fan. It's just humanoid, man. I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's <is> humanoid. <laughs> Like, um, oh, you don't I fucking knew, know I knew she that. might be. He puts it back out of his pack and drops it. Oh, I, I totally knew that wasn't the correct. <laughs> I was clearly making what you call a joke. Oh, yes. Uh, so. <laughs> These strange humans that I've been traveling with seem to think it's uncomfortable if I try to eat something else that looks human. <laughs> I just want Abraxas to keep a journal of just, like, weird shit humans do that he's, like, growing up. Oh, I need to start I doing that. I was not taught this strange ritual of showers. Okay, moving on. <laughs> right, right, right. We're doing oh, trail. a thing. Oh, the trail. Oh, I'm switching out from my falchion to my sling, and I'm loading it with one of my cold iron bullets to be ready, just in case. You continue to wander the path, and then you see this majestic and graceful, powerful animal that has branching antlers atop its head. It is almost sparkling white. Its fur is so shiny. This animal has been well cared for, and lifts his nose to the air and starts sniffing, and then he looks towards you, and he doesn't look angry at all. He just kind of approaches you and goes, He's approaching us? Yes, very calmly, though, not angry. Well, hello there, friends. How are you? I'm sorry, Dustin, is that your horse voice? It's Mr. Ed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, we've already established friend. that this animal is not native to this zone and shouldn't be talking. We had that discussion before we left town. A talking stag is not native to this area, but talking stags are native to ears. So check. Or could be native to Sarah's, and you've heard stories. Witchcraft is what I say. Hello, how are you guys doing on this beautifully chilly day? Your idea of a beautiful day and mine are not the same, but, you know, we're getting through it. Do you hail from these parts? What? Okay, so that's a good question. Where are we? You're in the forest. There's snow. I know. Okay, so, but, like, where is the forest? Like, if you had to label it in the world, like, what country would it be in? I'm not sure. I was wandering, and I just ended up in this place unfamiliar to me. I heard some people talking, what is the something woods? Something border woods? Something like that? This is an area I've never been to before. We haven't moved geographically. Winter has just come here in a very intense way out of season. You mean it's not winter here all the time? No, friend. No. No, it isn't. By the way, is no one else noticing that it's a talking deer? I mean, I... I'm not a deer. I'm a stag. Is that what we're seeing, or am I still rainbow blind? I'm going to do a perception, just in case ambush and all that fun stuff. 21. I give the air a little sniff. (laughs) Uh, Everything looks fine. You smell a very well-cared-for stag. Well, uh, 
this area is not safe there, brother. You should head back to from where you came. Just go in the direction that you came from. Hey, hey, hold it. Hold it. I'm not done asking this very nice white stag some questions, okay? Just hold the phone. I'm sorry. What was your name? I missed it. My name is Stag. I'm sorry. Your name is Stag? You are a Stag? Your name is Stag? We don't have names out here. Mm-hmm. All right. So where are you from originally? Like, where where did you grow up? What neighborhood? Uh, well, aren't we in Erison? See, that was the question I was asking originally, and you seemed not helpful. But no, you are not in Erison anymore. Where are you guys from? Kansas. <laughs> Pip is still peeking suspiciously over Odessa's shoulder, <laughs> eyeballing this talking stag. So it's like, this is Taldor. How did you get here? I just walked. Uh, how long did this walk take? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. I've been out here for a day or two. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, uh, doesn't check out. Who takes care of me? I take care of myself. No, I want to do a sense motive. <laughs> you can't be that well groomed. I know grooming yourself. I don't say that out loud, of course, but I, Abraxas knows grooming himself, and you can't be that well groomed. Uh, 13 sense motive. He appears to be telling the truth. All right, I'm going to do it too. So will Pippa. She is extremely suspicious of a talking deer. I got an 18. (laughs) Pippa got a 16. You both notice that the voice is not coming from his mouth and in fact seems to be sourced on his back. Ah, shit. So Odessa's going to walk around the side and she's not pulling her gun out, but she's kind of shifted Pippa to the side so that she can pull her gun out really easily. And so she's kind of like got her hand on it while still carrying Pippa. And so she's going to walk around the side of this crazy ass stag. What are you doing? What? Why are you out upon this part? We're just fans of the wilderness. We're on a nature hike. Do you, do you need to be escorted we back? We just out for a walk. Roll me a bluff, all of you. <laughs> on a walk. Oh, yeah, mine's Natural a one. 20. So, 23. Natural 18, mine's so a, a 25. Mine's a natural <laughs> one, and Abraxas is thinking, it's like, this could feed a family for days. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those haunches. Oh, my God. Why are you traveling out this part? <laughs> Me personally, it's my job. What's your job? Escorting fine animals such as yourself to safety. Escort you to my belly. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm like, escort you to safety. My stomach's like... <laughs> oh, well, that's an interesting career choice. Does it pay well? Uh, <laughs> he means do you get money for it? Oh, no. Oh, heavens no. Odessa is literally looking at you like, oh my god, just fucking shut up. Stop uh, talking. uh, But Braxis sees that, then he'll be like, um, I have something in my teeth. (laughs) Just (laughs) anything not to talk. I am. I I just had a couple more questions. You know, I actually, I think you got a little dirt there on your back side there, on your hide. Why don't I help you with that? I think I'm fine. And he turns and looks over his head and he's like, yeah, I'm fine. No, it's, I mean, I, I really think that it would, it just, I think it just looks like a smidgen of dirt. I just, I got a cloth right here. I can just wipe it off real fast. It'd be real helpful, I think. You're so... You're such a pretty white color. You don't want dirt on your hide. Your friendship is appreciated. I like how you're better with animals than I am. You're <laughs> <laughs> You want to eat them. That's why. <laughs> Please, I appreciate the help. All right. So she's like walking by, has like a cloth and is just going to like brush off the hide that's not dirty. Oh goodness, there you go. Oh, it looks so much better. What is on his back? There's nothing on his back. It just sounds like something's coming. His voice is coming from not his face. Give me another perception roll. Alright. Can we all roll? Sure. I mean, you're with me, so you would see what I would see. Abraxas doesn't see sure. shit. No, he's wondering why we're still out talking to this thing. 
Pippa rolled an 18. I have a 17. You hear the noise coming off of the back, but you don't see anything. Mr. Stag, I suppose. Animals around here don't don't normally talk in human languages. How is it that you're speaking common? I just always spoke this way. Uh Uh-huh. Not all animals talk, but I've met a few over the years. Is this enough of a distraction for Braxis to, like, stealth off? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I'm gonna, like, stealth off into, like, I don't know, the bushes or something. Oh, hell yes. 26. Yeah, I'm gonna say that happens when Odessa was wiping off the dirt because the, the head was turned and looking at it, you know, because it was it was I and you and making sure that you weren't gonna do anything crazy pants. So, yeah, I'm gonna say... you looked like you were gonna fucking eat him. <laughs> I still might. So, wherever there's bushes or I don't know where I would, like, stealth to naturally... I moved you to where some bushes are. Okay. I remember all my winter clothes is white. Where do your friend go? I bet he went into the bushes to, you know, relieve himself. Oh, I understand. I just don't know why he just doesn't do it wherever he's standing and all of a sudden you hear this sound underneath. Because people don't let me anymore. Apparently I'm not supposed to do that. It was disgusting. (laughs) It's a weird human thing where we typically do private stuff in the private. All right, my our sense motive thinks that he's just like the nicest fucking guy, right? Like just a nice deer who can talk. Well, roll me a, a sense motive again. Okay. You guys have been talking for a while. All right, I got a 19, and Pippa got a 24. He is lying through his teeth. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I'm not telling he him seems fucking, too fucking shit. Nice. Did we both know that or just Pippa? You both know that. Well, you all have a good day, and he starts to walk away. Wait, I just, you know, I felt like we were friends. And you don't want to, maybe we could have dinner together? I mean, we're hungry. I have berries. I'm not going to eat gonna you. just going to shoot him. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> While Odessa's talking. <laughs> I'm not going to eat you. I, I'm i not into game. I No offense. Roll me initiative, guys. Damn it. 13. 13. Eight. <laughs> hey. Abby can go first. <laughs> she said it first, technically. Pippa, you were going to take a shot? Okay, I got a nice, rolled a natural 19 so with my attack bonus. That's a 23. Okay, and on a 19 to 20, I get, uh, I get to confirm, right? Yes. Yes. I uh, am going to assume that a 10 does not confirm. A 10 does not hit, but you do get to do max damage. Okay, so uh, he takes 12 points of damage. Ow! Abraxas, he looks like he's ready to carve and eat up. Yes, starts salivating, has a free action. Odessa, you are up. Odessa's going to pull out her gun and aim it at his face. And she's going to say, are you ready to start telling the truth now? And she's going to attempt to intimidate him. That is a 16. You have demoralized him. So he's shaken for two rounds. Negative two penalty on attack roads. Okay, good job there, Odessa. And now it is Brax's turn. Does he say anything? She asked him a question. No, he just goes, oh, like he tries to shake it off. Kind of freaked out. Hmm. Praxis is going to... He's going to use his sling. 15. That's a hit. Roll me damage. Some cold iron goodness. Five points of damage. And he drops to the ground. And as he drops to the ground, all of a sudden this minuscule green-skinned humanoid with a small needle-thin rapier and a pair of dragonfly wings comes rushing towards Odessa and goes to attack. And it touches your gun, and I need you to roll me a will save on your gun. Oh shit. It's casting this devious fucking fairy fuck magic. Okay, so I don't have a bonus on will save because I don't. Um that is a 14. <laughs> You just pass. Oh, oh my god. Oh god, what if it's like chill metal or some fucking thing like that? Oh. Pippa, roll me a knowledge arcana. Uh, 14. Uh, you know that he, the incantation he was saying was shrink item. Oh, little, little pistol. Oh little my pistol, god. Little pea shooter. It would have shrank it down to diminutive size. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Some people think shrinkage and cold isn't like a thing. There you go. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Oh wait, can the episode's nice. name be like shrinkage? Shrinkage. Shrinkage. <laughs> Perfect. Cold may cause shrinkage. Cold may cause shrinkage. There we go. <laughs> Would she know whether or not he needs to be close to actually pull that spell off? It was a, it was a touch. 
He went up and touched the weapon. Then, as a free action, Pippa's gonna yell out of out of the bushes like, Odessa, back the fuck up. <laughs> okay. If he can touch you, he can mess up your shit. <laughs> Since it's Pippa's turn, I'm gonna say that's her free action. Now, what would you like to do? Um, now that her, she's kind of given away her location by yelling, she's gonna see if she can stealth into some other bushes. Okay. A 15? Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, um, is that your turn? Let's crit this bitch, please, dice. It's a 19. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Will she confirm, though? 17. Did I confirm? Yes, it is a, It is confirmed. So ro- pull me a crit card there, Angel. Crit card! Woo! Tenacious wound. Normal damage and one die two con damage. Target does not heal this damage naturally. Oh wow, that's pretty. That's wow. pretty nasty. Okay, so that's four points of damage. I also get to roll a, a d2, one, <laughs> one additional point. So you did five points in total. I did five points total of damage. That is gonna hopefully that lowers their hit points. We can only hope. Yep, Odessa, you're up. She's pissed, and um, yeah, she's just gonna aim at his forehead and just try to wreck him. Eighteen to hit. It's a hit. And that is 13 points of damage. And he falls to the ground and dies. In the noggin. Yes! I'm traveling with a bunch of badasses. <laughs> I knew there was something funny about this. She comes back out of the bushes. As you clamor around the dead stag and the very angry uh, Feywin was his name, you find a bag on the stag containing a carved ivory scroll case, a carnelian gem, a lapis azuli gem, mm. an obsidian gem, a quartz unworked gem, a tiger eye gem unworked, a tiger eye gem, a potion of arcane mark, a scroll of shield, and 15 gold, 19 silver pieces, and 10 copper pieces. Wow. That is quite a haul on that guy. Tiny douchebag was rolling. I am suddenly super glad we bumped into him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad one of us is. A- yeah, so Abraxas waits a couple of minutes before coming out of the bushes, just in case there was another ambush. You continue down the trail. You come into a clearing after spending some time in the trees. A human-sized snowman stands in the middle of the trail before the frozen stream. <laughs> a pardon? A snowman? Oh my God. A snowman? A crude wooden sign leans against it and bears the words, Trespassers, turn back. Um, that's like the chest all over again. We don't need to touch it, right? Does it have anything that you guys want to take off the body? It's a snowman. <laughs> that disgusting effigy. <laughs> like, I had to practice that I've ever seen a snowman. I'm like, what the hell the is The disgusting that? effigy. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sure Braxis has seen a snowman at some point. No, I know. He's, he's made some. I don't want to go near it. It looks like a snowman. Like, with a carrot nose and everything? Yep. I recommend we give this thing a wide berth. That looks... That looks creepy. This has been the most creepifying day I've ever had. I... I don't like the look of that. Already don't like snow, and the fact that it now looks like a person that could potentially fuck me up, I am just entirely uninterested. As you guys are standing there, the snowman turns its head up and says, Can't you read... The sign says, turn back. Now get lost. And we'll see you next week. All right. (laughs) Fucking creepy I am not getting lost, sir. (laughs) No. (laughs) You are trespassing. don't look like a uh, super tan busty chicks nope dang that's 
That's too bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of disappointed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Odessa, take care of him for us. <laughs> like, s- see if you can flirt your way out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> take one for the team.